In this chapter, we'll wrap things up by looking over the effects section of Pad Shop and looking at a few tips and tricks. You get to the effects section of Pad Shop with this tab. The effects are pretty straightforward, but as you've seen, the combination of granular synthesis and the modulation matrix are so versatile that Pad Shop doesn't need much processing. The effects are connected in serial, which means the signal flows through the chorus, then through the delay. At the moment, both effects units here are turned off, so there's no impact on the signal. Click here to turn on the chorus unit. The first thing you have to decide is if you want to run this unit in chorus mode or flanger mode. Both effects fatten up the sound, but they do it in different ways. A chorus effect works by splitting the signal and detuning part of it. Whereas a flanger works by splitting the signal and sliding part of it out of time ever so slightly. In fact, the name flanger dates back to the early days of recording when engineers first discovered that they could create this effect by dragging a fingertip lightly along the flange of a running tape machine during transfers. The subtle time delay threw part of the signal out of phase. Either form of modulation will cause the signal to pulse slightly and the next controls let you adjust how quickly that pulsing happens. You can use the rate knob to set its value in milliseconds. In order to demo the chorus and flanger, I want to set up a bass sound. First, I'll initialize this patch. Now, let me load up a waveform. Okay, that's not exactly what I'm after, but watch this. I'm going to adjust the position control and fish around for a portion of the sample that sounds closer to what I want. Here's another option for creating a bass sound. I'll initialize Pad Shop. Now I'll load up the sample Contrabass Pizzicato. And I'll set the duration to 1000. This will allow the original sample, which is very bass like, to play back, like this. Now let's start playback and adjust a few of the chorus parameters. You turn on the delay unit by clicking here. The next option is to pick the type of delay. The stereo setting introduces the same amount of signal to both left and right channels. The cross and ping pong settings alternate the signal between left and right. The time control lets you set the echo in milliseconds. And the sync control works much like the one on the chorus unit, 
allowing you to lock the echoes to the beat. The time left-right control lets you alter the stereo field. The feedback controls how quickly or slowly the echo dies away. And the high damp control filters out high frequencies from the echoes for greater realism. The more damping you apply, the more aggressively Pad Shop will choke off the high frequencies. Like this. One way to learn the programming secrets of the pros is to spend some time looking over your favorite presets and analyzing how they were constructed. This applies not only to the effects section, but to all the sections of Pad Shop. I think you'll be surprised at how many of the presets which sound highly processed are actually achieving that sound through the manipulation of their grains or through the use of the modulation matrix. Finally, as you become more comfortable with Pad Shop and decide to start doing more programming, check out the Pad Shop manual and the two tutorial exercises at the end. They'll walk you through working with various grain links step by step. I hope you've enjoyed and learned from this video. From everyone here at Combined Minds Media and Streamworks Audio, I'm Jeff Queeby. Thanks for watching.